Hey, regular 4xE fans, it's a beautiful day, good day for an experiment, and uh, it's also a good day to do a tire rotation. I actually realized I'm a little bit over doing tire rotation on my, uh, from my, on my stock Sahara wheels, and since it's time, that time to rotate them and that time of the year, I'm going to go ahead and throw my KO2s on for the winter, and man, I'd love to get out and get somewhere and do a little off-roading before it gets too cold, but I, I want to do an experiment. You know, one of the things that... Uh, we have experienced with the Wrangler 4 by es the Rubicon's just ever so slightly less efficient than the uh, Sahara and the high altitude, and a lot of that has to do with the wheels. So I'm going to do a roll test with these wheels. We're going to I'm going to do a roll test down this hill. I have marked a spot. Well, I haven't marked it. I've picked a spot on the path. Uh, this is like a, a hill that goes down into a park. Um, this is where my boys played uh, t-ball and early coach pitch and everything and uh, it's a great place to do an experiment like this because it's one long hill and then it's just flat all down through there so uh, I've picked a spot where I'm going to center the front tire and I'm going to do a couple roll tests try to figure out a way to mark the spot where the Jeep stops on these wheels then I'm going to go back home and we're, I'm going to swap out the, the uh, four wheels that are on the ground. I'm not going to swap out the spare. That way we keep the weight consistent and everything. Even though these tires, the only difference between the, um, you know, the uh, stock Sahara wheels and the stock Rubicon wheels, it's about four pounds. Let's just pinch over four pounds each. And uh, so we're going to see how the rolling resistance does. And I want to keep the weight the same. So I'll leave that spare on. And then uh, we'll uh, come back and do the same experiment with the uh, KO2s on and just see how it goes. All right, just for uh, data gathering, I'm going to put the vehicle in neutral and I'm going to release the uh, parking brake. And I do not have max regen on or anything. So here we go. Three, two, one. And I'm going to try to turn as little as possible, though there is a turn here in the uh, parking lot. But I'm going to try to be consistent with how and where I turn. And hopefully, you know, cars come along. You know, it's not a busy park this time of the year, but hopefully uh, I can do this without any, <laughs> without disrupting anybody's day. All right, we're at five mile an hour, four mile an hour, three miles an hour, two, one. And what I'm gonna do is let the Jeep stop and then put my foot on the brake so it doesn't roll backwards or anything. So there's our spot, set the brake, and I'm gonna mark this spot somehow. I don't know if I can use a post. Rather new pavement. Uh, maybe I can do this with extra bubble gum. I don't know, find a way to mark this spot. All right, here's what I did. I put a pack of bubble gum down and uh, we'll see. I just put it straight across in the center of the tire and we'll see how that works out. All right, here we go with run number two. You can see I have centered the wheel right on that point and we'll hop in here and uh, see how that works out. All right, run number two, vehicle's in neutral, parking brakes off and I'm just gonna let it go. dogs up here. And thankfully they didn't run out in front of me and run that take. So we're at nine mile an hour, we're at eight mile an hour, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and when the Jeep stops on its own, I'll put my foot on the brake, and there it is. Let's see how we did. All right, this time we made it about six feet farther. That is the second roll. That's the first roll. Uh, now I'm going to try to figure out a way to kind of mark this and not leave my gum out here, because I imagine it would disappear if I did so, but uh, so I can go home and swap out the wheels and see how the next run does, and uh, I'll figure out a way to do that. All right, I have my points marked with two rocks, and uh, we're going to go home and do the uh, swap out of the wheels, and we'll come back and 
redo this test on those wheels and see what the difference is. Here we are back on the hill where we were earlier, but now we have the KO2s all the way around. I did not replace the spare on the back. Like I said earlier in the video, I'm gonna keep that spare on there so the weight stays the same. And uh, we're gonna do our same roll test. We're gonna see how it turns out. Uh, the temperature difference is about eight degrees, oddly enough. Um, I did have a sweatshirt on earlier in the video, but I put that sweatshirt in the vehicle so all the weight stays the same. I can just see somebody be like, oh, you, you took your sweatshirt off. But um, so we're going to give it a shot, see what the rolling resistance is, see how it does. And uh, like I said, on the way over here, I could tell a big difference in the noise. That's, that's one thing I always notice. But uh, let's see how it does when we roll it out. Here we go. Put it in neutral. We're going to let it roll, see how this does. I can hear the wheels. So, you know, I've always heard if you can hear a wheel, then its rolling resistance is higher. And uh, I have noticed when I'm doing, um, you know, like long trips in the 4xe with the, Sahara, the stock Sahara wheels versus the KO2s, that um, I get lose about two miles a gallon and I lose about two miles of electric range. And so uh, it just, I would assume that has to have everything to do with the wheel and the tire and everything. So here we are, we're at four miles per hour, three, two, one. And I gotta say, it's looking like it, my, my test here might not be successful. Either my model is no good or something because I do believe I came to about the same place. No, we are just a little shy of where we stopped on our first roll test with the, the uh, Sahara rims on there. So I think you can see that. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna say about a foot and a half shorter. Gosh, it's making me question if my model's any good here. So we're gonna go back up the hill, try it again, see how that does. Okay, here we go with test number four or test number two with the KO2s and let's see how this does. Put it in neutral, not in drive. And uh, here we go. I'm questioning if my model for my test here is good enough, as close as these came, or my theory's bad, <laughs> that, um, I mean, I, I definitely see a decrease in fuel mileage when um, rolling the KO2s, so I can't imagine that there's not a difference here, you know, that could, in a test that could be emulated like this, but I'm, I'm questioning if my test is good enough. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll see here until it comes to a complete stop on its own and not allow it to roll back any. And there we go. Let's go see where it's at. So, uh, second test is only about six inches shy of the first test that I did. So, I don't know. Tear this up in the comments down below. Like, was my model bad? Was I not getting up enough speed? I mean, I tried to make everything the same. So what are your thoughts down in the comments below based on experience? Maybe, maybe this just isn't a long enough test to uh, to really see a big difference. I mean, we, we need, neither time did we come up as far as the Sahara wheels did. And uh, so I'd say there's something there, but maybe, maybe this is just too small of a test to really prove it out. So let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Take care.